topic for today's presentation is nerve conduction velocity test that is NCV test. In this presentation we are going to study what is NCV test, what are its uses and indications, the nerve conduction study and the sensory nerve conduction study. NCV tests basically are used to determine how an impulse is conducted through a nerve. A nerve can be sensory, motor or a mixed nerve. Commonly NCV tests are performed on ulnar nerve, medial nerve, peroneal nerve, posterior tibial nerve, radial nerve, femoral nerve as well as sciatic nerve. It is not invasive and no special precautions are basically required for it. Now we come to the uses and indications. They are mainly used in the situations in which a doctor suspects paresthesia that is numbness tingling or any burning sensation or maybe there is a weakness of arms and legs and the patient is not able to perform a task properly or while performing a task the limb gets so much weak that there is no gripping as well as numbness with some tingling sensations in situations like that it all depends on the diagnosis the symptoms any of the any symptoms which indicates nerve damage ncv tests are used to check its inflammation and uh, to what an extent a nerve is injured ncv test can also determine the extent of injury the site at which ncv test is done is completely dependent on the symptoms present now talking about the contraindications there are no as such basic contraindications to this NCV procedure but uh, if a patient is having an artificial pacemaker some precautions must be taken now coming to the motor nerve conduction study well motor nerve conduction study is also known as compound motor action potential now what motor nerve conduction study basically is uh, when we talk about a motor nerve right a motor nerve is a nerve which conducts impulses from spinal cord or brain to the muscle it uh, the spinal cord or brain signals the muscle to perform an action which is known as motor role of the nerve so motor nerve conduction studies are used to check the conduction of impulse along peripheral motor nerve fibers now coming to the principles of CAM I'll just zoom in here we see the electrodes used in this motor nerve conduction study is the reference electrode yeah, this is the reference electrode the active recording electrode this one is the active recording electrode the ground electrode the reference electrode is also known as anode which is marked by red color the active recording electrode is also known as cathode marked by black color and the ground electrode which is the symptom and the second picture shows us the stimulating electrode so these are basically the four electrodes used in this procedure so coming to the basic principles the first principle is that distal muscle is in a of the nerve is innovated for testing uh, for example if we have to test median nerve and perform an NCV test for median nerve the very distal muscle that is uh, the very end muscle that the median nerve supplies is abductor pollicis brevis so we would select the abductor pollicis brevis for the checking of NCV of median nerve the active recording electrode that I talked about also known as cathode which was shown in the black color in the picture it is always placed over the muscle belly the reference electrode the shown by red also known as anode always placed over the tendon of muscle or it can also be placed over the ending of muscle or a bony prominence will also do Another is the ground electrode that I showed over there in the blue color. It is placed over the neutral area or any bony prominence. Just between the reference electrode and the active electrode. 
the last is the stimulating electrode the stimulating electrode we give stimulation to the nerve through the stimulating electrode and then the record from the recording electrode those stimulating stimulating impulses are recorded now coming to the physiology if we study the diagram first i want to show you the diagram first so this is the muscle this is the nerve these are the two stimulating points right the two stimulating points the proximal point as well as the distal point we stimulate the nerve from that stimulating electrode shown earlier first at the distal point and record the time the time one record the time from which the impulses travel from here till the muscle and recording electrode shows its activity then we record the time on proximal side this one this proximal side and then this time proximal the time from which stimulation is done to the time the muscle respond is also noted that is time 2 the proximal latency the time 1 is the distal motor latency that is time taken by the action potential to travel from distal stimulating side to the muscle and time 2 is the proximal latency that is time taken by the action potential to travel from proximal stimulating point to the muscle and then the ncv distance is also calculated the distance should be between the two stimulating point not from distal point to muscle or proximal point to muscle no the distance should always be measured with the help of a measuring tape externally between the proximal and distal points now coming to the physiology now you'll know the nerve gets stimulated at the stimulating site we give the stimulate we give that uh, stimulation through that stimulating electrode to the stimulating site what happens is when we give the stimulating stimulation at the stimulating site the nerve gets depolarized when the nerve gets depolarized from its actual polarized state an action potential is generated in the nerve that action potential travels from the point of stimulation to the muscle and when that action potential travels from the stimulating point to the muscle the muscle contracts this muscle contraction is basically recorded by the recording electrodes this is the basic physiology that is used in the motor nerve conduction test now coming to the parameters there are three parameters on which we study the nerve conduction velocity of a motor nerve first parameter is the conduction velocity the conduction velocity is equal to the distance between two stimulating sides divided by time 2 minus time 1 in the previous slide i'll show you the previous slide in the previous slide see here i told you about the distance this is the distance used this is the distance so conduction velocity is the this this distance divided by time 2 minus time 1 and also the thing to remember here is time 2 would always be greater than time 1 this is because the the response that the muscle gives by contraction of from a proximal side will always be greater than the distal side you know due to the distance so coming back to our parameters the conduction velocity was equal to the distance between two stimulating sides divided by time 2 minus time 1 the next parameter we have is amplitude so amplitude is simply the size of a response how response see this is the size this part is the size so it is basically how high or the how what is the size of a 
response we get oh these these responses we get it on a monitoring screen which is connected to the electrodes this monitoring screen shows these basic graphs which we have to infer from the results so this amplitude wa these waves are shown on the monitoring screen on a computer screen so what is the size of an this size of an electrode is basically refers to the amplitude now there are two ways to measure the amplitude see this air the stimulus is given the nerve is stimulated action potential action potential starts de developing and then there is a response to the muscle so the first response we can measure amplitude from this is the baseline to the peak or peak to peak amplitudes sometimes uh, it all depends on the studies which we are doing sometimes the uh, amplitude is measured from base to peak or sometimes it is measured from peak to peak the next parameter is latency now what is latency if we say in layman's term we can say latency to be our time for which the contraction has occurred so now in the studies pattern what is basically latency latency is the time we give stimulus and we get a response see we are giving a stimulus here and we are getting a response here so latency is the this time in which we get a response so first response started from here so this is the onset latency and then we get a response positive and then the response go negative and then back to the baseline so this is the peak time when we are getting a peak so this time would be our peak latency also the graphs in the motor nerve conduction this x axis represents the time in milliseconds or you can say latency in milliseconds and this y axis of the graph represents amplitude in millivolts coming to the camp sides now here i've made a chart of uh, very common nerves used for the very common nerves used for the nerve conduction velocity test for example median nerve there are two stimulating sites of everything as i told you one distal stimulating site and one proximal stimulating site for example if we take median nerve we stimulate it on our wrist and on our elbow so we will test the median nerve action potential nerve conduction velocity in the forearm and we can use the recording muscle as abductor pollicis brevis same in the ulnar nerve in the ulnar nerve wrist and elbow are the stimulating sites and recording muscles we can record the electrodes from first dorsal interosseae or adductor digiti minima same with the peroneal nerve as well as tibial nerve now coming to the sensory nerve conduction study well sensory nerve conduction study is also known as sensory nerve action potential snap the purpose of sensory nerve conduction study is to assess the sensory component of the mixed peripheral nerve or simply a sensory nerve now sensations are basically uh in sense in sensation when we calculate sensation uh wait i'll tell you if uh, this is a muscle and uh, here is the spinal cord right so first exons travel from here to here to give muscle a signal for contraction this is basically the motor response now when the muscles give back sensations to spinal cord this is the sensory part of the nerve in sensory nerve conduction our sensations are being tested now sensory nerve conduction velocity measures basically the large and heavy myelinated axons that is touch and vibration sensations the sncv can be measured in two ways are orthodromically and antidromically now orthodromically means physiological direction of a nerve the distal portion of the nerve is stimulated and the sensory nerve action potential is recorded at the proximal point along the nerve the ring electrodes are basically preferred to stimulate a distal nerve now let me explain you this if this 
is the muscle and this is the spinal cord I'm making the spinal cord here so what I told you that the nerve for a sensory conduction the nerve impulses travel from muscle to the spinal cord so the physiological direction is distal to proximal this is the physiological direction of a nerve fiber so when a so okay so now in uh, orthodromical direction follows the physiological direction that is distal portion is stimulated and the sensory nerve action potential is recorded at the proximal point now I hope you got the point that we stimulate at distal and get at proximal this opposite thing happens in antidromic conduction the antidromic conduction is opposite to the physiological direction of nerve the nerve is stimulated proximally and we record an action potential distally for orthodromic ring electrodes are basically preferred and for antidromic surface stimulating electrodes are preferred the advantage of antidromic recording is that however the large amplitudes due to nerve being more superficial distally it is easier to record a response basically in the antidromic we record a response distally and nerve is proximated prog and nerve is stimulated proximally so it is easier to record a response because the response is starting from the distal end and goes to the proximal end if we are recording uh, the response distally then it is easier to record response because a nerve damage sensory nerve damage will give response distally more easily than it will give a response proximally here's another picture of stimulating the orthodromic conduction here is the response are record here the distally here is the distal part and here see this is the proximal part and in antidromic this is the proximal part and this is the distal part we are giving the stimulate from stimulation from stimulating electrode proximally and the response is recording distally whereas the stimulation is given distally and the response is recorded proximally now what are the parameters of sensory nerve conduction study the same way we studied the parameters of motor nerve conduction study we are going to study the parameters of sensory nerve conduction study there are same three parameters on the basis of which we judge the sensory nerve conduction study first latency latency as i previously told you is the time so latency of orthodromic stimulation remember orthodromic means uh, physiological direction stimulation right so orthodromic stimulation is shorter than antidromic stimulation now if we study amplitude amplitude says uh, SNAP uh, sensory nerve action potential amplitude is measured from baseline to peak line see this is the negative peak line or the positive to negative peak line see again see we are measuring this base to peak or peak to peak amplitude is measured here as well whereas in the latency part this is, is where the stimulus is given and this is the onset intensity and this is where the peak is coming so this will be the peak latency now coming to the nerve conduction velocity well the nerve conduction velocity in a sensory nerve as well as in the motor nerves the neurons demonstrate a uh, similar properties so they are measured in the same way as we measured in the motor nerve conduction velocity thank you